Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Knife Chats. This is a quick shout out to my friend Eric over there at Slick Slicers over in the UK. He has a channel that he talks about uh, UK legal knives on, uh, but he collects quite a few other things. Mostly he shows on his uh, channel UK legal things. Um, and if it's UK legal, it's pretty much legal just about anywhere to carry um, because they have very strict laws about it. Eric also collects other things. And in um, any case, he saw my thing on my grail knives and uh, I mentioned in there that I was looking for the uh, M1905 or M1942 um, sword bayonet for the M1 Garand. And uh, shortly after that, he sent me a note saying, Hey, uh, I don't have that, but if you're interested, I have a, um, a sword bayonet for the uh, SMLE, the Mark III SMLE. Um, little did he know when he sent that to me, the, the note to me, I have always thought that the Mark III SMLE is the best uh, military bolt-action rifle that was ever in existence. Everyone talks about how great the Mauser was, but for me, it was always the Mark III SMLE. Um, there were accounts of it during World War I where the Germans thought that they were going up against people with uh, semi-automatic rifles because of how quickly they were able to cycle the bolt and keep on target and hit target after target with it. And it's because of the design of the SMLE. You can actually uh, cock the, uh, the rifle using your thumb, lifting the bolt up, pushing it back, bringing it back forward and dropping it back down, all the while keeping your hand right on the trigger and keeping your, your hand or, or your, your sight picture straight as can be. So you don't lose your sight picture and you can actually cycle the bolt and shoot. And um, the, the British grilled on this and were ex experts at doing this. And so it's very easy for them to hit targets at 300 yards repeatedly uh, without ever losing their sight picture. So they could go through those 10 round magazines really fast. And that was the other thing, 10 round magazine versus a five round magazine and a Mauser. So double the magazine capacity, super fast firing and accurate enough. Yes, there were other rifles that were slightly more accurate at extremely long range, but the Mark III SMLE was more than accurate for most soldiers. Uh, so they, uh, and it was accurate enough uh, for sniping, but usually it was not used for sniping. But in any case, so much for the rifle. I mean, like, as you can tell, I, I really like the rifle, but this is what Eric had for me the pattern 1907 bayonet for the SMLE, the Mark III SMLE. And it's one big honking sword bayonet. And uh, this is the second sword bayonet I have, uh, actual sword bayonet. I've also got one repro, but uh, I'm looking to get other uh, sword bayonets. I really like these things. Totally impractical for any use other than you know, being a stabby fool kind of thing. That's what they're really for. Um, they're, they're not there for anything other than putting on the end of a, uh, of a rifle and stabbing something. Uh, and as you can see, let's start down at this end. This one is in extremely good shape. It looks like it's probably never sharpened, which is not unusual. Uh, really good point at the end there. I will be doing a another video on this in the future but i just wanted to show it real real quick now because this is what uh eric sent me and this thing is in i mean immaculate condition considering this could be um well it could be 100 years old or older um this could have been something that was issued in world war one and then later again used in world war ii uh the british used the uh the Mark III SMLE all the way up until about 1942, they started phasing it out. The Australians continued to use it all the way into the 50s. And I think the Indian Army or the the, the India uh, militia continued to use it all the way into the 1960s. And this bayonet remained with the Mark III SMLE. They didn't cut them down or anything. 
As for the scabbard, this thing is in immaculate condition. I mean, totally immaculate. Um, hasn't even lost some of the paint on the, uh, the the metal or the bluing, whatever it is. And I've got a, um, I've already got a, a canvas frog that was used in World War II. I might look for a leather frog, but uh, I already got a frog for this from World War II, which I've been using with my Spanish Mauser, so I'll need to get a different frog for it because uh, I want to get this thing as accurate as possible. But yeah, fantastic. Got to really tell you, Eric, this, I, this is amazing, totally amazing. I will do another video talking more about this in the near future, but... Uh, he knocked it out of the ballpark when he sent this to me. I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to top it, sending something back to you, but I will try. Uh, and that's not all. Wait, there's more. Not only did he send me that, he also sent me this. This is um, a two-piece clasp knife from World War II. We know it's from World War II because, uh, if you see here, if you see that, there's an arrowhead mark there, and it's dated 1941. So this is a 1941 issue knife, uh, two-piece clasp knife for the Army uh, from World War II. Uh, also in immaculate condition for its age. So, you know, 1941, 51, 61, 71, 81, 91, 01, 11. <laughs> the knife is almost 80 years old still got a bear of a snap on it and the, if you notice here copper it's got a copper shackle on it otherwise uh and you got your screwdriver there i'll do another video on this also in the near future and he also also was kind enough to send me a royal navy lanyard he sent me a Royal Navy knife before, and he said, this is uh, the lanyard that you can use for the knife, which is pretty cool. I also know this lanyard could also be used for, like, your uh, your infilled pistol or your uh, any other uh, pistol that happens to have a, a lanyard loop on it. Uh, and it's pretty cool. This knot is set. It doesn't move. And this is a slip knot. So you can uh, get this up under your armpit or around your neck. If you get it up under your armpit under your lapel you can pull it out so that it's resting inside your armpit and you got more than enough length if you if you're using a pistol so that you can actually aim the pistol and everything so that's kind of cool too so uh, I'm thinking well he said uh, it's for the Royal Navy knife I'm thinking uh, might end up being on uh, on the end of a Enfield uh, revolver or something like that instead. Don't have one yet, but uh, you never know. That might be something to look cool. So, any case, thank you enormously for not only the lanyard and the two-piece clasp knife, but this beauty, a pattern 1907 SMLE bayonet. Just amazing. I will do a video on this, but just really needed to get this out there and say thank you enormously, uh, Eric. And if you have not checked out Eric's channel, Slick Slicers, definitely go and give it a look-see because it will be worth it, especially if you're looking for information on UK legal knives, which means knives that you can pretty much carry anywhere. Uh, and uh, he's got some really beautiful knives over there. Thanks again, Eric. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.